So Mark, tell us about creating types using templates. Sure, Roy. Well, as we saw before in the declaring types from usage video, mm -hmm. we can declare types based on the way we use those types when they're not yet declared. So we can take code like this, if travel voucher weren't declared yet, and we can declare it that way. So that's one of the ways that we can declare types if we understand how it's going to be used. Alternatively, if we understand how it's going to be implemented, in other words, the code that we want to write, we can use templates to declare that code very quickly. Sure. And I'll start by creating an enum. And when I say very quickly, I also simultaneously mean incredibly efficiently. So you use the fewest keystrokes possible to declare that. Sounds good. All right. So to declare a new enum, I put the caret where I want the enum to be, and then I hit the letter E for enum. And you can see over here on the right, I've got a cheat sheet up for you here. Use letter E for enum. Okay, yeah. And then I'm going to hit my template expansion key, which is either the space bar or the tab key. If neither of those work for you, just go into the Coderish menu and choose the setup wizard. And you'll see an option in there for choosing one of those two options for your Code Rush template expansion key. Okay. So now that I've expanded the e-template, the name of the enum is selected for me here with this orange box. That's a text field. That means whatever I type in here, when I hit enter afterwards, it'll go to the next text field. So let's call this the section for our airplane seating. And so now that I've typed in the name of the enum, I'm done with that field. I can now press enter to go to the next field, which you can see is highlighted for me right down here in this first element. Yeah, we can see that's our next location. All right, yep. Yeah. So I'll hit enter, and now that one is now selected. And I'm going to type in coach. Okay. And I'm going to hit enter. And now I have automatically down to the next line with a new element that I can create. And here I'm going to type in business. And I'm going to hit enter. And now I'm going to type in first. And I'm done now with the enum. So to get here, just to recap, I use the letter E, yeah. followed by the space bar or the tab key, whichever my template expansion key is. Uh -huh typed in the name of my enum and hit enter. And then that took the caret from here all the way down to there. Yep. And then I typed in coach and I hit enter. I didn't have to hit a comma. No. I didn't have to do anything else. I just hit enter and it added the comma for me. I typed in business and I hit enter. And now I typed in first. So we, we're literally just typing the names of the concepts we're interested in, enter after each one. It's just like making any other kind of list. There's no worrying about braces or commas or, or any of that stuff. That's right. Just the names of the symbols, we're typing those in and hitting enter between each one. By the way, you can anticipate that if I keep hitting enter... Absolutely. I was going to say, you could invent any number of sections at this point. So I'm curious, how are you planning to stop? <laughs> how can I stop? To get out of this... Now, normally, by the way, if you're a C-sharp developer, you end a statement with a semicolon. This is true. And Coderish comes with a feature called smart semicolon. All I have to do is hit the semicolon, and I'm done. Oh, beautiful. It closes up the text fields and puts me down on the next line after the enum. Yeah. And I'm done. That's really good. That's the magic I'm done key. It is. This is the most efficient way to declare an enum that's possible right now without drilling a hole in your head and putting in sensors directly onto your brain. Fair enough. And chances of infection, much lower. Yes. Recovery is instant in this case. So that's how you create an enum. Just to do it again very quickly here. E space, then type in what you want to call the enum. Hit enter. Chocolate, for example, right there. Yep. Vanilla. Fill in your fields and then hit semicolon at the end. That's how fast and easy it is to create an enum. That's pretty quick. Okay, let's now show you structs. Okay, yep. So to create a struct, you can see over here in my cheat sheet, I'm not sure what it is. Oh, I see it's the letter S. By the way, check it out. It's pretty much the first letter all the way down. Yeah. Except for when you get to exceptions. That's the one. What's well, the first phonic in that case? It's still X. You're right. So let's create a struct. I want to create a struct that represents where in the airplane the seat is going to be. In other words, what seat row is it? Okay. And what's its column? Or is it A, B, C, or D? That sort of thing. Sure. Right? So let's create a struct that stores that location. So to create a struct, it's the letter S. And then I'm going to hit the space bar or the tab key, my template expansion key, whatever that is. Mm -hmm. There's my struct. Now I give it a name. So we'll call this seat position. Yep. And then I'm going to hit enter. Now I'm inside the struct. 
And now I'll use some templates that we discussed in other videos to fill in the inside pieces of it. Sure. I'm gonna create an auto implement property that's an integer, call it row, and I'm gonna create an auto implement property of type char, and I'm gonna call that a seat column, for example, yep. like that. And there it is, I'm done with my seat position. Yeah, we've done done the struct with an S. It's exactly what you expect. And as you'll see from other videos, again, we've got properties involving integers and chars. That's very simple as well. And we are done. None of the tedious pressing of shift key and looking for special symbols. It's just as is. That's right. Now let's create a class. And this class is going to be called Ticket. Okay. And so I use the letter C. You can see over here on the right, C for class. So C for class, space bar or tab key. And we'll call this Ticket. Hit enter to get inside. And now we want to have, now we want to have uh, the price as a property inside of that. We want to, let me grab seat position right here. I'm just gonna copy that to the clipboard. I want a property of the type on the clipboard. We'll call this uh, maybe location for now. And we need, we need to section. have, I want to get a section right here. So I'm gonna come up here, copy that to clipboard, jump back down here and put that down there as well. So now we have a price, a location and a section for that particular ticket. So just to review, E for enum, S for struct, C for class. And of course, Coder is taking care of some of the syntactic details that we just don't need to know. These templates, for those who don't know, cover both Visual Basic and C Sharp. It's the same keystrokes in the same order, generating exactly what you need. So for example, where there are differences in syntax for something like a class, you see the constructor there named after the class in C Sharp. VB.net, this is not the case. We use the keyword new, uh, but you don't need to know that. Okay, you can move between the languages pretty easily by just using this kind of concept. That is correct. Finally, let's create an interface. So I for interface, let me go back so I do that a little slower. I for interface, spacebar or tab key, mm -hmm. and then type in the name of the interface here. So we'll call this the I seat upgrader. Sure. And let's go grab that ticket reference, come back down here. We're gonna create a method that returns a ticket like that. And we'll call that method upgrade seat. Let me drop a marker grab seat position, come back. We'll create a variable of that type seat position and call it position. And that's it. Sweet. So I've shown you the first four here. I'll just quickly show you the last two. D for delegates. That's if you want to create the old fashioned event handler delegates, you can do that if you want. Sure. You can also use X for exceptions. So X by itself will get you an exception that looks like this. Wow. And you can also do X followed by a type shortcut, such as the letter I for integer. And you can add an additional property there. You see there it's declared a property of type int called value here. Sure. And maybe we want to create an exception that actually has our ticket in it. So let's copy that to the clipboard, come down in here, and we'll use that slash key right there. And so now we've got a ticket exception. So let's just take a few seconds to look around this generated code we've got here. Look at the amount of boilerplate that is just done. All of those linked values yeah. that you would otherwise be having to type, the, the number of repetitions of the phrase ticket as appropriate to each of those cases. I, I can't even begin to imagine how much time this one template expansion might save me. Yeah, there's a lot there. You can see all the links, all these pieces are linked up. Making a change to one changes all the others. And it even gives you, in the exception, a property of type ticket there as well. We can call this uh, ticket here. And there you can see the changes going everywhere all the way through it. Even the regions named, even the text is in there inside of the message. Yeah. All of that, those pieces are modified for you. And now we very quickly have created our ticket exception. Now, just in case people are wondering, you know, can they make their own? We're not going to dive into that here, but the answer is yes. If you wish to make your own templates for your own custom in-house classes and similar repetitive procedural code, this is entirely possible. OK, yep. this serves as a great example of the complexity you can reach. And indeed, you can go far further should you want to. But using them is an absolute breeze. Yeah, that's right. It's pretty fast to do and you can modify them as well. So it's not hard to modify. It's not hard to create your own. Of course, Coder ships with a lot of templates built for high speed development, as you can see here. Yeah. OK, Mark, thanks very much. That's fantastic. We've covered classes, structs, interfaces, enumerations, quickly stepped into delegates and exceptions. And I think we've given people a real sense of what declaring types can be like when you use Code Rush templates.